Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you didn't know, I'm a diagnosed narcissist, but before I say the things I'm going to say in this video, keep in mind that I am not a licensed professional, so with that out of the way, I thought this would be a rather interesting video to make. I guess essentially just getting to, you know, the whole core of it and whatnot. I mean, I speak a lot about how the core of being a narcissist or maybe like the core of just being like a cluster B person in general is basically having like no sense of self, a complete like black void and no actual sort of like self identity. Yep. A lot of that is definitely true, but I thought this video would be, I guess, somewhere along the lines of, I guess, the narcissism itself. And I wanted to talk more so. I think at least firsthand what it feels like to be selfish. You might have heard me say a lot of times that I actually do think everybody else is selfish. I mean, everyone, including myself, we're all selfish as human beings. And a lot of people might consider that to be just a projection on my part because, you know, admittedly, I'm a very selfish person. That's what goes along the territory with, I guess, you know, being narcissistic. I at least try to project that I'm very self-centered. I at least try to project that I don't care about anything and I only care about myself, blah, 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 whatever, and all that kind of stuff. So I think this video is more so gonna describe my thought processes, processes and whatnot in terms of what essentially it feels like to be selfish. And I think along the lines of, I guess, basically my struggles with empathy along those lines, maybe a lot of these things that I'm gonna say in this video are gonna cross towards, um, a video I made some time ago, basically, I guess talking more in depth about like my lack of empathy. I didn't actually watch that video prior to making this, so I might just cross along a lot of things that I might have said in that video. So if you still remember that video, then okay, I guess like my apologies, but hopefully there is still something here that will provide a newer level of insight, essentially, because I've been thinking about this quite often. I guess in presenting as a narcissist, being somebody with narcissistic personality disorder, essentially trying to be a extremely selfish person in order to avoid feelings of shame and insecurity because yes narcissists deep down at our core are basically very insecure people i mean that's why we're so empty that's why we have like no sense of self that's why we just i don't know or at least if you ask me i just kind of feel like i'm dead inside constantly and all of this is just a shallow mess and i'm just like it's stupid it's dumb everything is just dumb and stupid so i mean i think i pretty much already gave like one reason as to why i'm a pretty like selfish person i guess i kind of just think that everybody else is also selfish i think i'm selfish so it kind of just comes with the territory existing as a human being is essentially being a very like selfish person that's why i think we're pretty hypocritical because i think like basically this is what i observe within human nature I guess we complain about exploitation, but we also contribute to exploitation itself. So when I say exploitation, I guess I'm just defining that as basically having one over on people or, you know, I've said lots of times and I'll still say it now that basically as human beings, we essentially all have like our agendas and we're trying to influence and control people, whether or not we want to admit it. I feel like as a narcissist, I can straight up admit it. Sure. In little ways, I'm trying to control people. Even subconsciously, I think I'm trying to control people. I think people are trying to control me, even if they don't actively realize that that's what they're doing. They're, you know, trying to, you know, control me as well, because basically it's just the rules, I think, in terms of like being a social species. I mean, you have your biases, right? I have my own biases, whatever, blah, 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 things like this. Whatever we tell people is always going to be a direct analyzation of something that we think is true or we think should be true. Or we think ought to, you know, sort of be this way. That's why there's fights over politics. There's fights over religion. There's fights over... Yeah, whatever politics policy what the standards of a relationship what is considered cheating what is considered being unfaithful whatever blah 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 all of that kind of stuff because everybody has some pre supposition in terms of how human beings ought to behave and it gets extremely complicated and this video is not necessarily going to be like a moral philosophy one but if you've seen a lot of those videos that i've made i guess the issue that i have with morality in general is that everything just falls under like david hume's like is ought fallacy and nobody can bridge that gap in terms of how humans ought to behave so this is how i see it basically so whatever we want whatever you want we're just plastering it all over the you know the gap of the you know is ought sort of like problem we're trying to plaster that gap as much as we can in order to like you know 
not have to confront the fact that, like, there is a gap. Maybe I ought to make a video on, like, quasi-realism already. But again, this video is not necessarily going to be, like, a full-fledged moral philosophy video. I don't mind making those videos, but I guess this is not necessarily appropriate for this kind of video. But basically, yes, I'm just trying to explain my understanding in terms of, like, why I just see human beings as just, like, these hypocritical, you know, like, selfish creatures and whatnot. And I think the reason I struggle with empathy, even when, like, I don't know, like, when I talk to people with, like, peace and love sort of, like, hippie attitudes, they might say something, yeah, we've all heard it along lines of, like, wouldn't it just be easier if everyone could get along? Like, can't we all just get along? And be like, that's impossible. Because there's so many agendas. There's so many, you know, ways of the truth. And a whole bunch of things are basically jumbling in my head right now. Oh, the red pill, the black pill, the, yeah, whatever. Again, politics, religion versus atheism, whatever, blah, 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 things like that. What is cheating? See, again, I mean, this is what I live every single day as a narcissist. And yeah, it sounds exhausting, but I think, like, I can't stop thinking about it because, you know, I just accept the truth of it for like what it truly is. Or it's like when you turn the news on and then you see something terrible, those get the most amount of clicks, right? Those get the most amount of like views. When you go on a website about the news, it's like, oh my gosh, maybe this shooting occurred. Maybe this kidnapping happened. Maybe this bombing in some country happened. You know, it's like, we always pretend, and this is what I really think, we always pretend like we're people that actually care about each other, but like in a way, like we're still tribal. We're still like animals, which is why I can't deny like, you know, like the evolutionary fact. People basically only get along with each other when they think they have their own. You know, like as the saying goes, you care for your own. And basically the only reason people huddle up together is basically because of like self-confirmation bias. Why is it that most people in a population tend to share the same views? Again, self-confirmation bias, because again, they people will do anything to disappear from that is ought gap. Let's say like when we're talking about like morality and like whatnot, because like they need the essential script to guide them and make them feel like we're something. But truth be told, like again, it's all just projections. Life is basically just an entire projection and there is no meaning to anything. And we're basically just waiting up until like the point that we die. So we're distracting ourselves with fuck shit that we're desperately trying to convince ourselves actually matters, but it doesn't. And the fact that I think that we're so desperately trying to convince ourselves that what we do, the things that we say, I guess even as I like make this video, is like, again, it's just to bridge that like gap that will never truly be fulfilled because humans from the start are empty. I would say every single living thing is basically just an empty thing, just draining out and basically like waiting to die. The curse of being a human the way I see it, essentially, is basically just being able to retain more abstract information, at least in comparison to, like, a whole bunch of, like, other animals. Because what species or what lineage of evolution on this Earth suffer an existential crisis more than any other, like, type of, like, species or, like, lineage in the evolutionary line? It's fucking human beings. And that's why I think we're literally, like, that selfish. Like, look at we're so selfish because our ability to retain this sort of like information, whether it's your knowledge on politics, religion, atheism, whatever, like all this kind of stuff is quite indicative to me of just how like selfish every person truly is because no other animals are not basically debating this on the same level that like we are. And then again, I know you can say that they're not even like able to, but it's like, okay, so whether it's my conscious quote unquote, like psychological analysis of trying to like, you know, make human beings, it's our own biology and like nature itself. Like the fact that like we have language to explain concepts in comparison to like other animals, we're wired to talk. This doesn't even necessarily have to be about, hey, maybe you can call it love, whatever, uh, blah, blah, blah. Or, but see, but like, that's the whole like irony in general. Because, for example, even if we take something like politics, either political side is trying to appeal to people out of love, right? Because every single like political agenda, whether or not people want to admit it, is always us versus them vote for my party, vote for our party. It makes more sense to be a Democrat. It makes more sense to be a Republican, a liberal, a conservative, a, a leftist, an alt-right person, whatever. They're all trying to appeal to some sort of like cult because they need an essential script to make sense that they've retained, whether it's by themselves, like, let's say like their upbringing or like, you know, confusing and like manipulating, you know, like other people. Because I think like, that's the, that's the thing 
about like human beings. We pride ourselves so much. And like, yeah, sure. <clears throat> it's not like I disagree. We are better than a lot of animals for this reason, being able to like retain information and talk about like abstract concepts and whatnot. But if you see the way that an animal lives, which is why I don't really deny evolution and whatnot, they need the same amounts of predictability, I guess. Or it's like, what are the basic needs? Shelter, this, that, or like whatever. But our bullshit is that we get to argue things about like economics and policies and like whatever, but, like essentially it's all just catering to the same thing, food, uh, shelter, whatever, all this kind of stuff. But, Oh, I don't like the way you do it because it makes me uncomfortable. I don't know if this is necessarily a good rule. Well, yeah, I think it is. Cause I mean like politics, it basically like, you know, it influences everything. Psychology, it influences um, everything. Philosophy, it influences, you know, everything. And speaking of philosophy, I actually wanted to make a video talking about, like, a philosophy has kind of made me realize that maybe everybody is truly just, like, mentally ill. And I could go more into detail about that, like, in another video and whatnot. But I mean, like, okay, trying to focus specifically on this topic in terms of, like, why I would see why I'm selfish, why other people are selfish, and, like, why... It's like existing as a human, playing the game, so to speak, if you ask me, is basically just being a selfish person in general. And I just can't buy the fucking like hippie, dumb, like fairy tale lies because like every single time I hear somebody say like, oh, um, wouldn't you prefer if somebody were to treat you nicely, treat you kinder, treat you better? I'm just like, yeah, of course I would. Who wouldn't? Right. But then what is that going to mean? And then hypothetically, we can have a political argument. Hypothetically, we can have a religious argument. We can have a, I don't know, a psychological debate argument, if you will, even about like, you know, the meshing of personality types together and whatnot. But um, yeah, okay, but here's the thing. I don't expect anybody to treat me with like kindness and like respect, whether or not it's because I think so low of myself, which is also true. I just also fail to see how the world doesn't operate on any sort of like selfishness. So sure, the way I see it, love is always conditional. You're not going to be nice to me just for like the sake of it, especially since like, um, okay, if you've ever seen The Dark Knight, basically Joker kind of does go on like a spiel talking about how like these people, they'll eat each other the run at the first sign of like trouble, like whatever. Like, a lot of people have the privilege to think that they're not selfish because they live a life where basically everybody just, you know, enables what they think is supposed to happen. That's why there's different societies, there's different cultures and like, you know, all like, you know, basically like doing their own thing because you don't have to think about these complexities. That's basically the, the ignorance is bliss notion of being like an npc in this world where you're dominated by people that are let's say truly like high at the top the world leaders the presidents the i don't know whatever like yeah you, i'm pretty sure you can fill in the blanks of like basically like what i'm trying to say so it's like okay yeah i wouldn't expect it i wouldn't expect anybody to like treat me kindly of course i would prefer if nobody was fucking with me i'm sure everybody would prefer if nobody was fu fucking with them right but like if you ask me like more like realistically all i know is that if anybody does mistreat me it ruins some kind of agenda that like they hold it ruins some kind of like control that they have so love or kindness or care even that always comes conditionally think about how many breakups you had think about how many like relationships that like you've lost sure this is the thing that I've observed about like human nature. People can always try to get along, but if you don't maintain the status quo, and that already comes with a hierarchy of its own, if you don't maintain the clique, if you don't maintain the politics, the religion, the philosophy, the whatever, then basically you will not get that love and love will strictly always be conditional. Even if you ask me, even to like a very like biological sort of like level, and I'm not trying to throw my cluster bees like under the bus, but like, I'm just saying this to like, you know, make a point. If you're wired to have empathy, okay, that's just because of biology. If you're not wired to have empathy, that's also just because of biology. Because basically us cluster bees, okay, the reason why a lot of cluster B people struggle with empathy, and you can see a lot of like research in as well, because at least like, if we're not talking about like the nurture aspect, and we're, we're focusing specifically on like the genetic aspect of it, I don't necessarily know like all like the brain terms, I'm just like, you know, throwing this like on the spot, but you, you can look it up though. And it's basically whatever the part is that deals with like emotional regulation is like, you know, super terrible, at least in comparison comparison to like the average person and that's why cluster b people struggle with our emotions well, like a lot of times or at least like if you ask me it feels like i have no emotions or it feels like they come out like all out of 100 but then either way i always go back to my momentum of like 
I don't know, like my, my pathological emptiness that comes with a narcissist being, a, you know, being somebody with narcissistic personality disorder or basically just fucking um, my depression, I suppose, because I do have major depressive disorder as well. So like, that's also something that I've wondered for like quite some time. I'm just like, is it just a chemical imbalance or will I truly always feel this numb and i.e. like a feeling of emptiness, quote unquote, like depression, similar to like depression as well? Because I, uh, it sounds so hopeless because I think like, if I cure the chemical imbalance, it doesn't get rid of my pathological narcissism. I think so. I feel like I will still always low key feel something akin to depression. So my, so even then I feel like it might just like interact with each other anyway, where it's like, you know, trying to boost the chemicals to like make somebody a happy person. Like that's essentially what you do with like fucking like antidepressants. Right? But like, it'll always numb out because at a pathological level, at a cluster B level, I am just empty and nothing, but whatever. Death is on its way any day now, as it is for everybody else. So, yeah, those are some thoughts from a narcissist you can chew on if you've watched this video.